Hi there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com with match number five with the Black Green Delirium. Hopefully, we can actually uh, salvage this and go three and two and continue our streak. Uh, yes, we like to go first and romp, romp, romp. This is a terrible hand. Double Smuggler's Cop would be great if we could if we could actually realistically cast them, but it's too risky. This is this is actually an incredibly good hand. We'll keep it. It's got the Blooming Marsh. It's got the Grass of Darkness. We actually want that on top. Uh, we can go the Night Market Lookout first turn into a Smuggler's Copter. And that is about as ideal of a hand as, as this deck gets. And it is... Didn't we play this Roar Person already? Wasn't that our first matchup? I hate these 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 the way the leagues work. So awkward that you can get the same person twice. So the Copter comes out... And we'll get in with the Night Market Lookout. Nice, aggressive hand. Uh, best case scenario we could draw into is like a... I don't know what we could draw into. So is he keeping up a grasp, grasp of his own? Uh, we need to hit a land there. I'm going to go Blister Pod. Because that gives us a activation or another attack with the Night Market Lookout. Which is 2 damage rather than no no damage. So see if he's got the yeah, he's got the harness. But we will get to tack in with the night market lookout. He's down to a 16 we're at a 22. And he had to use all his energy on the harness harness lightning. You know, I think this is the energy deck. He misses his land drop too, so it's pretty even. And I miss my land drop again. But we have the board state. We have a second uh, copter. Hits his land drop. Miss ours again. See if it gets killed. Unlicensed disintegration coming down. Yep. I feel pretty far ahead though, 1124. There's Evolving Wilds to get his blue source. Yeah, oh no, so I have no clue what we're playing against here. Can we hit our land drop? No, we can't. Pretty powerful hand though if we do hit the land drop. Not Kalatos. Oh. Alright, so give us, please give us the land here. Black Source. Into play tapped. Womp womp. I hate these tab lands. Blooming Marsh would have been great there. But if he has any control, we're just done. It'll just give him too many zombies. And life. So another Evolving Wilds. There's the blue source. There's the Kalatos swinging in. All right, we bait that out so that he can't get the zombie first. So now we're in great shape. He does kill, but he gives us that life, which is significant. He's down to a nine. We got rid of the Kalatos, which is one of the harder cards for us to deal with. Our opponent has tons of lands now. He's up to up to uh, six lands. So uh, Gear Hulk, and we'll take the damage. And that's fine. That is going to be kind of a rough card to deal with. But the Pariah, another comes into play tap land here. Jeez. Just not coming out on our, our terms here. 
will Catacomb Sifter, and then he'll swing it with the Combustible Gear Hulk, and we should be able to. So this is just the Gear Hulk deck with Kalatos, maybe Weaver in here. Harness, Harness, Noxious, Combustible. Three cards in our opponent's hand still. Have some more damage. The good news is this will give us a scry and enough creatures still. Because we want to land. Oh, I want that on top so badly. I'm going to put it on bottom, though. I want to hit a land drop for the Pariah. Which we did not hit. So I'm doing Enthusiast here so I can have Pariah next turn. So we can just block with the Weapon Cross Enthusiast. I'd like to actually have him cast another Combustible Gear Hulk here. That actually sucks because now he's going to be able to keep a few of his cards. Sahili. Yeah, that just does a damage to me, right? I guess I should have kept a grass back to, to block his combustible gear hulk. This will give us some scries though. <sighs> Don't want the Blooming Marsh. Or the Nyssa. Nyssa's actually okay. Nyssa's fine. I want a Cryptolith right though. Sahili though is, is pretty good here. Well... That will give me another draw. The, the problem is he'll keep a combustible gear hulk. We get rid of three energy, a world of virtuoso, a thopter token, and a combustible gear hulk here. I can keep back a grasp. If I grasp and catacomb sifter, that might just be better. Yeah, I think that's actually better. I don't think we're in any... Or just night market lookout. I think I have to grasp this Werther Virtuoso. So there's a Thopter. We can make him block the Thopter. Yeah, that's fine. So the Thopter, I did that on purpose, so because we can go Night Market Lookout here. Actually, what we can do... Oh, no, we can't quite do a... We Night Market Lookout to block. Unless he's got a removal spell. If he has a removal spell, we just lose. But I think that was worthwhile. Yeah, maybe that wasn't the right play. I just die here. I can't block enough. So that was a mistake. I probably should have just pulled down Pariah. And then he would have been left with a combustible gear hulk. So it's just a, it tries to copy. So Transgress is going to do amazing in this deck. Um, Liliana's fine too. He just, because these type of decks, Kalatos is actually okay. Runa's path's good against this, against this one as well. I think we just need to go more of the late game strategy. It does run like probably Radiant Flames. Uh, I'm going to cut the Zul ports. I don't know. This should be an easy matchup for us. We beat it the first, first time. It's the same person we beat the... Yeah, Transgress seems incredibly good. And Marionette Master, 
We're just going to take out the token strategy. Um, a crypto can come out at this point too. I actually don't even know if Liliana is good here. We'll just kill Thopters if he's going to go the Thopter out. And he's slow, so Liliana can easily ult. Uh, we'll definitely keep this hand. This has everything. Grass of Darkness should have came out. I, I totally spaced that. I can kill the Virtuosos, but that's about it. So Transgress is huge in this one, though, because I'm going to be able to take out any problematic card, whether it be Sahili early. Or Combustible Gear Hulk. Demon of the Dark Schemes is way late. Ruinous Path, Virtuoso, I can just kill. Uh, so I'm just going to take out the Radiant Flames. We have a Sifter next turn. Our opponent's also stuck on lands, which is really good. Because I'm, I'm actually going to go the Sifter here, and hopefully we can get off enough damage early before our opponent can respond. But, I mean, we kind of have a weak hand after this. He puts out the vir possibly puts out the Virtuoso here. Just going to harness. Yeah, that was a tough card for us. We can transgress, though, and get another card here. I'm going to swamp. Yeah, we'll transgress and keep up the Grass of Darkness. Ruinous Path, Virtuous One, License Disintegration. I think at this point we just have to get the Demon. The rest of those cards aren't, aren't terrible for us to deal with. And he doesn't even get a Thopter, he just gets energy there. Soul Enthusiast. And Night Market Lookout. And swing in with the Scion. We're really far behind though. I mean, he does have one removal spell, Ruinous Path in hand, and then some unknowns. So what does he have? He has... We got the Demon out of the way. Just a webcast enthusiast of his own. Interesting. But that was a huge draw. That was an awesome draw. Because it is two turns, and I don't believe he had anything in his hand to deal with it. No Thopter tokens. Yeah, we've seen everything but the Ruinous Path, which cannot cannot target it. Barely pull that off. That was that was tougher than I expected. Maybe maybe Zulport route is actually better if he tries to. Like, I want the grass because we saw Kalatos. The Pry is still seem pretty good too, but he's got a lot of ways to deal with them. I actually don't think the prize are the right route to go. I would rather go like the Zulport Marionette Master combo with the Crypt with Rights. Is Nissa Nissa does seem good though. Ruinous paths do kill. Is Luliana actually gonna get us anywhere? We know he's running Weaponcraft Enthusiasts, so Luliana's good there. So is Kalatos necessary? I don't think Kalatos is. So, I mean, I would like the Blister Pods because it is Radiant Flames to come back from. And maybe just... I still think we need as many Grass of Darkness as possible. Um, but we do have the Ruinous Pass that can also take care of it. So maybe like a 50-50. A now, I think it's just the Zulaport cut. The Marionette, Marionette Masters are actually weak. And we can, we can keep in two Zulaports or one Marionette Master. Or I think just like Kalatos. Double Kalatos here. Maybe even a one of... I think, actually, Kalatos seems... seems no, because he's got unlicensed disintegrations and... A lot of ways just to deal with it. We'll keep in one. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's... Maybe it is the Marionette Master that's the route to go. In this... In this... In this, uh... Version. I'm gonna keep it. 
Triple copters. I'm keeping it. I think that this is fine because if we just draw into one like catacomb sifter, this is a way powerful hand. And these these copter hands are good versus the radiant flames. All right, so we do get a hissing quagmire. So we have the lands to cast everything. There's copter number one. But if he gets a virtuoso here, that's actually a really powerful start. But we do get the sifter, but unfortunately it is going to come into play tapped. So we're just going to go another copter. Opponent is definitely Chandra. Chandra is going to be awkward here, though, because we'll be able to Catacomb Sifter and kill a Thopter. And get rid of the Crypt of the Fright and the other Chopper, probably. So we get to really set up our hand here. Yeah, we'll get rid of the Chopper. He can wrap out like a gear hulk next turn. But now we're in the Westville Abbey route, which Westville Abbey does really well. He's going to add the mana. And he gets another Virtuoso. So that's going to protect against the chopper. But he wanted the mana for something else. Harness, probably a harness lightning to get another, another one out. Unlicensed disintegration. He's going to keep it back. We're going to force his hand though with a transgress. Wonder do we need the blooming marsh here? So we'll transgress. See what's up. This should force out the unlicensed disintegration. And then we'll crew in response. So Noxious Gear Hulk is probably the right card to get rid of here. Uh, no, because we'll, we'll we'll kill the we'll kill the Chandra, so you can't even cast it. So ruinous path. I think I'm just gonna get no, rid of another virtuoso. Because Chandra does die. Yes. So if I Westville Abbey, we can go Crypt with right and. The Night Market Lookout. Jeez. Well, that sucked. At least we get those off the top. Chandra dies. Jeez. 
Sahili is rough because it is damage, and I have to tack into Sahili. Oh no, he's going to go for the Virtuoso, so you can get another Thopter. Yeah, just take the damage. I don't know why it didn't attack with that one. Had haste. It's getting ridiculous with the lands. There's all our Cryptolis. They're gone. And there's Kalatos. Beautiful. So let's get rid of the forest. So he's going to keep Sahili alive, but at the cost of two Thopters. Um... I think it is worthwhile to cast the, play the land. No, we still want more loots. <sighs> well, that was a good draw. But we'll get Sahili now. And I will play the second Westfell Abbey. I think it's worth it. So he's still missing land drop. We know he has one Noxious Gearhulk, possibly more Gearhulks in hand. But the Westfell Abbey is coming out next turn. Absolutely is. We know he has a Ruinous Path still in his hand as well. Uh-oh, lagging big time here. Come on. There we go. Can I make a token here? I can't end a turn. So you go to a five. And there's the concession. All right, so we beat all the Grixis decks. That was a cool little deck there. We beat him twice, I believe. I believe that, yeah, that was our first matchup. Um, the Green Black Broom and the White Flash are actually pretty... Um, and I'll have to go through the statistics. I know I'm very far ahead versus, versus both of those matchups. Really, the Green Black Delirium, they need to get the, the Grim Flare out very quickly and Ishkana out very quickly. Other than that, most of the cards in the deck aren't that great versus the spread go wide um, 
type strategy where they're just trying to like grasp a few cards here and there. The U White Flash too, you can definitely get ahead with the the choppers of your own, and just the Grass of Darkness is very good in that matchup. So win another three two finish. We'll see what we open. I'll open my treasures. These terrible treasures. I guess it's not going to give us our um, points here. Or did they change it? They didn't change it in this last... I guess it'll just have to wait. Oh, there it is. Never mind. We get it. There's our play points and treasure. So I'll open it for you. Let's find our treasure. And see what garbage we get. Oh, never mind. That's not a garbage. We get a Mox Opal and a Slippery Bogle, which I do think actually is, is worth money uh, <laughs> on the, uh, yeah, on Empty Joe. I believe it is. So, sweet. I'll take it. An Expedition, Mox Opal. They really should have made it so people could, um, what's the word? Where you, if you have a whole set of them, you why shouldn't they, they should be able to redeem it. That would get people playing Empty Joe like crazy. Uh, to redeem the Mox Opals, the, the uh, Expeditions type cards. Anyway, because you can only get them from these treasures as well, which they're very, very rare. And I still think to stabilize the MTG economy, they need to make redemptions better. It doesn't cost them really any more money to make these mo make make three the the treasure chest cost thirty five dollars or the excuse me the the masterpieces cost thirty five dollars to redeem. You make money, wizards. Do you hate money? Does Wizards of the Coast hate money? Anyway, this has been Kevin with uh, RogueDeckBuilder.com. Thanks for watching.